When the next storm brings large waves to Tampa Bay, a new buoy being deployed close to the beach will show the sea height and help improve forecast models. Uh, looks like all is good from here. We've steamed around in circles and it's just as flat as can be, no relief at all. This is the closest Gulf wave buoy to Florida shore and its position is strategic. It's anchored just 9.5 miles in front of Egmont Key on flat sand bottom 45 feet deep. This makes it unique for nearshore wave analysis and local beach erosion modeling. Hi, it works. That's a good sound for oceanographer Mark Luther as he hones in on GPS data transmitting back from the rocking seas. That's the buoy talking right there. Heave is nine centimeters or so. That works out to about one foot waves, but the data well wave rider also shows wave period and direction. The reason why this particular site was chosen was because here's where the Tampa Bay pilots will get on and off some of the big vessels that make their four hour trip into the port of Tampa. This wave information will be accessed by those pilots. It will probably help keep them safe or call off decisions if the waves are too rough. The waves are too high, they can't get on or off the pilot boat. The deck of the ship might be 50 or 60 feet off the water, and they have to climb up a, a rope ladder called a Jacob's ladder to get up there. And if it's high waves, too bouncy, they can't do it. In fact, there have been instances where pilots rode ships to the other side of the Gulf of Mexico just to get off. It's taken 20 years to get the funding for the $65,000 buoy at data set up installation and the bill runs $100,000. Sure, it's a steep cost, but recreational boaters will benefit from real-time data as long as it's not run over. You see, big vessels, they know how to avoid the spoil area where the buoy sits just south of the channel, but power boaters may not spot it or give way to its long rubber band floating between the orange floats right under the surface. The tether is key to accurate measurements. And then these pieces of rubber band form a big S so that the buoy is never pulling on the anchor. It's just simply bobbing up and down with the waves. Data flows from the top mounted antenna on the buoy every 10 minutes to websites for you to check out. You can see it at NOAA Ports, the National Data Buoy Center, or Socora. I'm Mark Collins for the Florida Institute of Oceanography.